Hello, and welcome back to What's Bubbling at Zim... I am Dr. Abstract, and in this bubbling we're going to take a look at the general updates for Zim version Zim01. We've done a bunch of bubblings about specific uh, new features, big features, wow, grand features, and now here are all of the others. <laughs> Not so grand? <laughs> it's not fair. <laughs> uh, they're, they're still important and still uh, good updates. So why don't we go take a look at uh, what they are. We'll go to the Zim site now at zimjs.com. And isn't it nice, this header? Uh, every time I come back here, it's something different. I, I feel like I'm in Sydney this time. <laughs> I don't know why that is. Uh, but there's our banner. We can see the various uh, mini site by clicking on the banner there. But we're going to go to the docs right here and then choose. Here it comes back in, sweeping. In the puzzle, we sweep from corner to corner. Here we tried sweeping from side to side and it was okay. But now what we do is just uh, go for a certain amount of time and you get what you get. <laughs> there we go. So we're in the docs uh, under updates right here. We, What do you think? I almost think the docs, the updates now... There's so many of them, and it's so important, and they've got code in them now, and yet they're hidden in behind this little C updates. Uh, I think we should probably feature maybe a, a bigger picture of it or something like that. It's not a very visual thing, the updates, though, usually, but some way, an intro video updates. So anyway, look for that. Maybe there will be something in here that uh, brings that all, all all this stuff's important though so it's it's hard to say anyway updates here we are in the updates and what have we got well uh, an update bar ooh so all this is new to jump us down to the various uh, previous updates we're honing the updates a little bit it's a little bit industrial look i don't know i i tried a color on this bar and it couldn't quite figure out what to do <laughs> anyway so we drop back to gray there we go can't figure out what to do this is this is how i wear my clothing too it's like oh, oh i'll wear some gray that sounds good we've done these ones we've done the es6 modules okay but it wouldn't hurt you to read over this again. So this has as much information that we thought you would need to know. Um, so probably a good idea if you're using Zim a lot to read over those, if you wouldn't mind. Pixel, there it is. Site, so some updates to the site. Good. Color picker spectrum, we did that one too. Chroma keying, good. ES linting, yes, we talked about that. Color is removed on frame object. Okay, so here we go. This is the batch of, and just so you know, we're looking through that much stuff. Bum, 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 bum. All right, we used to put um, the Zim colors on the frame. So we, we would have, anytime we wanted a color like red, uh, we would say frame.red. And then we said, well, this is really handy. Let's take it off the frame and just put it on Zim so that we can just say red. So we did that and there's really no use for the colors on the frame anymore. So that was removed. In other words, if you say frame.red or paste in any code from old that has frame.red in it, that uh, won't work and you'll see black instead. Okay, so those have all been removed from frame, just call it red. Or if you're using the Zim namespace, zim.red. And remember, you can get to HTML colors just by putting quotes around the color there. Quote red is an HTML red. Physics speed. So we added a speed and speed Y properties to physics objects. Controlled by control. <laughs> ah, lovely. So in physics, we can say object.control and it's like a motion controller sort of, except it's adding physics forces. Well, you were stuck with a certain speed that whatever you set it at, that, that was it. You couldn't change the speed of what you were controlling. So now you can. It's kind of neat to see. I actually built this example right here. Good thing to build the examples. 
um, well, what it's doing is on an interval of two seconds, it's increasing the speed of this physics object that's being controlled here. So it starts off with a five speed, and then it increases it by 10 each time. And, and as, you're, as you're moving, the speed, uh, the control is arrow based. So as you're moving the arrows, you can see it start off slow, then get faster and faster and faster and faster, faster, faster until it reaches uh, the five times here on the Zim interval, five total count. Window optimize. So we added code to hide an object in the window that does not have, ah, right, okay, so this is window, not the window of uh, HTML, but the Zim window. If there's a lot of content in the window, uh, even if it's in a single, well, especially if it's in a single container, which it kind of is, but anyway, lots of content. Uh, Amy and, and team uh, were great. Thank you, thank you very much. Mentioned that there was a slowdown in mobile with that. It had to, it seemed to be redrawing that content, even though it wasn't in view. And I kind of thought that anything not in view, they wouldn't bother drawing it. But that's not the case, because sure enough, we, we stuck. 2,000 circles, uh, no, 2,000 rows of circles, four by four, so four times 2,000 circles on there. We added it, and sure, on computer, no problem. On mobile, yeah, sluggish. It was like jumping from, it wouldn't smoothly, um, so. So what we did is we realized, okay, well, if it's not showing, then we'll viz false on that. And uh, lo and behold, this was their solution, lo and behold, it scrolls really, really smoothly, even with this many in it. It's like, oh my goodness, that's amazing. So we set that as the default to do that. There is a setting in window that you can turn it off if you need to. And this handles, this works with list as well. List runs on windows. And so that's uh, great. Yay, window.optimize is put in place. That's an improvement for the speed of um, lots of content inside of a window. Single touch. We realized, <laughs> oopsies, uh, we were showing some people our puzzle here and our Zim launch, our puzzle, and it was like, no, uh, you know, they were they were doing it on a, on a tablet or something. And I go, no, no, put this one here. And the two of us did it at the same time, and we realized that our, our um, what's it called, a scrambler, doesn't work properly with multi touch, and. Never realized that. Never tested it, I guess, with multiple people touching, dragging tiles at the same time. So all of the scramblers of the past will have broken if you grab multiple things together. So uh, a solution would be to turn the whole app to single touch. And then we realized we had no way to do that in Zim. We could set it to no touch or it was multi-touch and no way to do single touch. However, there is a CreateJS setting to be able to do that. So we implement it on the stage and on the frame. Now the frame will make a stage for us. So basically we would put this in a frame. We've got a single touch parameter now on the frame that allows you to specify only single touch. However, we didn't want to turn everything else single touch just to make the scram, you know, well, to make the scrambler single touch. And we didn't want to tell people, by the way, when you use a scrambler, make sure you set single touch. So we wanted to work into the scrambler itself how to make it single touch. That meant making drag be single touch drag. So two things. Scrambler has a whole bunch of custom stuff on mouse down and, and up, but it also does drag. So we added a single touch parameter to drag as well. So if you want to drag things, and I'm surprised that this never came up as a request. I've noticed it before. You're dragging something, somebody else picks it up with multi-touch and starts dragging it the other way, and off it goes. Sometimes it bounces back and forth a little bit between the two. But anyway, I kind of just said, all right, we got multi-touch. There we go, multi-touch. But uh, there are times, probably, uh, where it would have been better to have only one person be able to drag something, and if somebody else tries to grab it from them, it doesn't grab while that person's got it. And sure enough, that was nice and solid. So putting drag to single touch maybe even should be the default, but uh, but it's not. So um, that's on the same object, that is. 
You know what I mean? So if you're if somebody's dragging an object, somebody else tries to come along and drag it, maybe single touch should be the default on it. Uh, obviously for gesture, where where you, the same person, is dragging it two different ways because you're gesturing it to scale up bigger, that's fine. You know, then then we need the so-called drag on that. That's something different. It's not really drag. It's the stuff inside of gesture. Anyway, blah 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 blah. Uh, we also went into the the code for the uh, the puzzle and had to start using the pointer IDs to make sure that if somebody or if one piece was mouse down on, we don't let any other pointer IDs come in and um, operate a mouse up. So it was really tricky code, very tricky code. It was like, oh, five hours of really hard debugging in there to make all that work. <laughs> it didn't help that one of the one of the mouse up events was assigned inside the um, inside the mouse down event and it had a true for activating only once and we didn't realize that. So basically what was happening is if the same pointer event uh, moused up, it, it closed the mouse up event, which then never had a mouse up event again. And it was like for that pointer event, it was like, ay, ay, ay. And once we realized that there, there goes two hours of debugging. Anyway, you, you don't need to hear about that. That's been what's bubbling, huh? Single, single touch we have now. That's nice, if needed. Um, here are some general ones then. Uh, collapse, collapse color and collapse parameters to the emoji picker. That's very nice. Thanks, Carl, for, for uh, wanting to do that. The emoji uh, picker was inside of a panel and we built that and then we added collapsing to the panel but never put it back into the uh, emoji picker and so now, now it has it. Super. Uh, we added a path global variable. So we've mentioned that before. This will automatically. And so here's the information on path global variables. Uh, if you just have some assets there, that will look for the image in the same directory. This will look for it in an images directory. Okay, so no path. If we say then path assets, it's going to look for that in assets. Look for that in assets. It will look for this in test. Okay, so it doesn't append if it's already got uh, an angle bracket in. Here's another example. So uh, inside a Zim frame with assets parameter of image and uh, a path parameter of assets. So the frame itself has an assets parameter already. That means if we do this, note that image PNG is this one, it will look in assets. Other will also look in assets because the assets parameter of the frame sets the assets um, global variable. If we set the path to null, then image will look in the assets directory because that's what, uh, okay, so uh, I don't know, I can't, I suppose we haven't done that yet. So same situation where we've got an image in assets, set the path to null, image will look inside of assets, other, because path was set to null, will look inside of the local directory. So this one was already identified as coming from that assets folder. This other one, which was not listed in the frame, would then look in uh, the local directory. And if we use load assets here and we specify test, then test uh, will come from the test directory. Afterwards, so here we ran the load assets, we passed in test, afterwards, or, which, or before that loads possibly, but down below here, new, where will new come from? Will it come from the assets directory? No, because path was set to null. Will it come from the local directory? No, because a new path was specified here in load assets. So it will come from the test directory. We brought back the load fail object. So if you see uh, a bunch of circles where there would be an image that's broken, that's the, the broken image, broken pick, broken image icon. All right, so by default, it's frame.makeCircles. But you can specify what you want or you can tell it to go away. Okay, so read about that. That's the uh, load fail object, it's called. Uh, we used to have it, but then lazy loading came in and I think messed it up, so we lost it. Uh, but now if the image can't be found, you should see a broken icon. 
which is handy because then you can say, oh gosh, I can't see my images. I should fix that. We added a dispose to the sound. Reverse and continuous parameters to flipper and fixed a manual flip thing. Uh, whatever, you can read that. So we added some more flipper things. Oh, right, flipper things. Uh, I might want to just flip to the clockwise, flip clockwise, flip clockwise, flip clockwise. I might want to flip clockwise, flip cl counterclockwise, flip clockwise, flip <laughs> clock, 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 whatever. <laughs> uh, come on, you guys. This is like my sixth bubbling. and My, my lips are bubbled out. I want to go eat some dinner. We're almost there, aren't we? Oh my God, we're not almost there. Uh, I didn't look. I zoomed in. That's what happened. It looked like it was small, but then I zoomed in. Right to left support on checkbox and radio buttons. Yay. Thanks, Rachel, for that. That's um, amazing uh, that we got that done for you. Anything else that you guys need on the left or in the right to left world, let us know. <laughs> let us know and we'll, we'll, we'll hopefully, hopefully we can do it. That's uh, always tricky, but always a uh, happy to help out. So we adjusted the tile not to clone objects that are ZIMV functions. Yeah, so that was always annoying. Um, if you got a result from a function like this new circle that's got an event on it, when you made the tile, Zim was cloning, like it was calling the function and getting whatever the return was, but then cloning it. It's like, Wait a minute, you don't have to clone that. It's This is an individual object. You don't need to keep on cloning whatever that returns. So we fixed that up so it didn't do that. Uh, we added CSS transformation supports. So thank you, uh, Yang Wang, for that. Um, this is when we use Zim Animate for animating HTML tags. And HTML tags can have the CSS property that looks like this, like a translate sort of thing. So now you can animate a C, uh, like an HTML tag with that. Uh, like that. That was actually built in already in CreateJS, but we missed the, not a plugin, but just the system to do it when we, when we um, threw our an Zim Animate into the CreateJS, uh, tween.js. We missed uh, the technique, but so that's been updated. Added a delay, time, and mouse close parameters to tip. That's nice. Yay. Okay, but there's a break in there because those are pretty upfront. And uh, therefore, if you had a bunch of parameters going on in your tips, uh, just beware that we've inserted some new parameters that are very handy to have those ones. We didn't realize, I think we had it all the time in show, but it was really annoying to every time we show it to have to remember what parameters to do here. So we just added those parameters right on the on the tip itself that allows them to be styled too, which is nice. Um, added a reset method to the, the GIF. Uh, remember, we've got Gifler that we would need to bring in to use this. And then there, Gifler comes with a reset, but you would have to GIF dot animate dot reset or something like that so instead of having to look up what properties or what methods gifler provides we brought the reset in and that just restarts the the animate or the uh animated gif squiggle and blobs with custom points now start with approximate bounds oh yeah we did it we so if you have blobs with custom points or squiggles we now approximate the bounds when we make it. We, we ran with that for about a year or two. Approximate bounds is, seems to be faster than we expected it would be, seems to be better than we expect it would be. So uh, we introduced that in Zim Neo. Uh, so now we default to uh, make unusual blob squiggle shapes, have the bounds wrap around them nicely. But if you ever change those, then you'll need to update the bounds uh, or run them through approximate bounds again. So anytime you need the bounds afterwards, you might want to approximate them again. And a bunch of little things. Adjusted bitmap color, uh, get color at to return 0 to 1 for alpha rather than 0 to 255. Okay. Adjusted Zim convert color to handle alpha properly with hex. Right. Uh, found out. We didn't know that you can do hex numbers with alpha thrown on the end of them. So number sign CC0000 is the normal color. Um, AA is alpha down color thrown onto the end of that. So we made our 
convert colors work with that as well. Added an array to find, so we can grab RGBA with an array easily. Added a Zim pose property. So Sammy wanted that to a display object that has a pose done to it. So anything that has a pose done to it will have a Zim pose object that tells you what was done to it so that you can recreate that from a database or something if you need to. And you've got some information on how that works and an example. So fixed a slider to allow a step of zero along with uh, used ticks. It was supposed to be like that um, on the dial, I think. Oh, supposed to be like the dial. The dial that, that did it, but for some reason it didn't get into the slider, so now that's fixed. Um, fixed style dot remember to work without an ID. That's great. Adjusted pages to automatically mask pages and tra transition effects. So pages now will uh, mask the pages so that the transition effects don't uh, show up outside of your pages, basically. Normally you don't see that because a page is the whole screen, but if it's not, or the whole uh, stage, but if it's not, then you have smaller pages. You it need We had to manually mask them, but now we automatically do that. Um... Uh, Adjusted the bitmap to include the scale parameter after the width and height before the ID. Yeah, that was all tricky stuff that we fixed in there. Probably it won't affect you, I think. Fixed rewind on CSS animate. Wasn't parsing the pixels. Uh, right. Okay. Thank you, Yang Wang. Um, made lazy loading work with outline. Oh, yeah. So now you can outline something that's lazy loaded and it will rerun outline once it gets the dimensions. Adjusted style to work with type value. Ah, oh, that was a tricky one. You couldn't style on the general styles. You couldn't style a type because um, of we were using that within type, but now we sort of remake this as TT type <laughs> and flip it back again once it's on. So, okay, anyway, you don't need to know that. Fixed bug, bug in pen where drawing was, oh, in pen, yeah, Zim pen. Where drawing was off, the paper wasn't at zero, zero. And thanks again. I keep on spelling the name differently. <laughs> Got to adjust that. Thank you for all your help, everybody who's given um, suggestions. More to come. Some more to come here. We've got to update the TypeScript, the Node Package Manager. We've just done the bubbling videos. Once again, Patreon's where you can donate. If you have been donating, please, you know, check your donations as well. Make sure you're not donating beyond your means. And thank you. For all you guys who have been donating in the in the past i hope you continue to donate as well it's always nice and we did run some marketing campaigns where we put the money into that uh, during the nft launch and we probably should look into some further marketing to try and get zim to the people so the money that you're giving us uh, is to try and get zim to the people uh, obviously it helps to <laughs> To have Zim being made, so the money's good because uh, we put a lot of work into this as well. That's always nice. And making Zim is a part of getting Zim to the people. Uh, but it would be good to do some marketing campaigns. Anything you can do to help too, to share, to talk to colleagues, to, to teach Zim, to get Zim into schools um, uh, would be excellent. Thank you very much. This is the last bubbling on Zim NFT. No. <laughs> Uh, oh, I got to redo this whole bubbling again because I just called it Zim NFT. Now, uh, the last bubbling on Zim version Zim 00. Once again, on that, you're welcome. Just call it Zim 00. We'll move to Zim 01. Uh, we're having some fun with the fact that it's Zim version Zim. <laughs> Uh, we do we did stick that up on GitHub by the way so the, the the launch is up on GitHub as well that's right here GitHub's been done with release notes so when that happens we do release notes and we basically reformatted all of this to fit in in the GitHub release notes so you can find it there and anybody looking on on the release notes will see something presentable. I am Dr. Abstract. I hope you come in and try out this puzzle. Uh, you'll get a surprise. One out of a hundred times this will launch like this. And you have to know how to click that to get back to here. Also on mobile, note on mobile it was tricky. Mobile has different, um, all, all these pages have 
depending on which page it is, have different viewports. This is like started at half, half the scale viewport. And when you pop this up on a different viewport, all of a sudden this is not paying attention to the size of the screen, but the size of the viewport, you run into problems. So what we did is uh, on mobile, when we click this or press this on mobile, it pops up a new window. All right, but here, this is actually two frames. This is a Zim frame sitting up on top. Uh, well, that's a, that's a div with a black background, I guess. But if I close that, all it's doing is hiding the div and hiding that frame or destroying, uh, no, not destroying, what are we, disposing the frame. And all that's gone and we're back here. We never left the page. So that's a pop-up. Oh, <laughs> not that. Uh, any, any, any click on the Zim, it goes back to Zim. But if you click here, that's a pop-up over top of the same page that closes the pop-up. On mobile, it opens up a new page. There you go. Thus ends the uh, updates, uh, the bubbling updates. <laughs> I was trying to bubble until the bubbling screen came up. All I did was select the screen. I didn't turn it on. I'm a loser. Um, that's me inside of those bubbles. <laughs> looking at me inside those bubbles, you definitely know I'm a loser, huh? Nah, winner. Look at all those happy people about, oh, so much fun there. Zim is fun. Um, VR is, <laughs> VR is funner. Uh, but we got a lot of Zim going on in VR. Everybody keeps asking in there, how were these things made? And we go, oh, these were made with Zim, all the, all this stuff, all the decor. And we're working on trying to get Zim in VR, uh, interactive. Right now it's pictures in there. But a couple of us, uh, we've got a team in there, are working on making those pictures interactive so we can actually play a puzzle inside of VR instead of just say, hey, this is a puzzle, and in the outside world, we can interact with it. <laughs> All right, cheers. Come and join us at zimjs.com slash discord, zimjs.com slash slack. Uh, if you were wondering about the difference between the two, it's really whatever you like. If you're already on Discord, hang out there. But traditionally, most of the support has been done on uh, Zim uh, Slack, where we answer a lot of questions there. But we can answer questions too on Discord. I just don't quite like the threading as much there. People haven't gotten used to threading, whereas on on uh, Slack we thread a lot, and that helps keep the the issues in their threads. <laughs> I know we can do that in Discord, but uh, like I said, people aren't quite, it's new in Discord, and we're not quite used to the threading there yet. We did push harder on Discord in the NFT world, so some, uh, you know, are expecting to get, maybe get more of the youth in, but uh, it's probably, it's probably the case, I suppose, and that, that's fine too. Uh, but uh, love to see you on either place, zimjs.com slash slack, zimjs.com slash Discord. Cheers. Until the next bubblings. I am Dr. Abstract. Have a great day or night. Bye-bye.